difficult to understand. They're here. Ah, Adrian. It's been a long time. Lewis. Hello, Martin. I'm delighted you could get away from the capital. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Well, I see the fire got you to do what I never could. Modernize the old place. The, it's charming. The larger part of the credit is to a very charming young lady who has excellent taste. Oh, young Mr. Cord's wife. Uh-huh. I'm very anxious for you to meet her. You like her, Adrian. Has your style. <laughs> I'm anxious to meet him. If he's all you say is, there are a few ideas I'd like to put in your head before we go back. Or perhaps they're already there. <laughs> ah, you won't be disappointed, Lewis. Shall we go in? <laughs> Good evening. Oh, he's done it. What? He bagged his limit tonight. The Lieutenant Governor, Judge Chester, Carrie, the magazine publisher, Malcolm Connors. Well, why not? Stephen's debut. He deserves it, right? Well, that remains to be seen. Clever, isn't it, the way the old man has lauded all these glittering socialites here on the guest list, just to mask the obviously political nature of the evening? Good evening, Elliot. Oh, hello, Judge. Rodney. Hello, Your Honor. Have a little wine. Like it? That almost all the big shots here tonight owe oh, your grandfather a favor in one way or another. Take, for instance, Judge Chester's son. You used to play baseball with him, didn't you? One June night, he had a little too much to drink. You remember that? Yes, that's right, and grandfather got the whole thing hushed up. Mm. But the fact remains, Elliot, that whether grandfather sponsors Stephen or not, Stephen has got what it takes. He'd make it on his own, and if he gets appointed, DA, he'll do fine. Oh, he'll be appointed, all right. The presence of our second in command assures that. You're kind of down on him tonight, aren't mm -hmm. you? I'm down on him, all right. Good evening, Elliot. Oh, hello, Mr. Baker. Rodney, could I speak with you a moment? Of course. Excuse me, Elliot. Yes, he says. Rodney, I want you to go upstairs and see what's keeping Betty. Well, Stephen hasn't arrived yet. She's probably upstairs waiting for him. Stephen's long overdue. It's imperative that she come down immediately to represent their interests. The lieutenant governor's wife is very anxious to meet her. Rodney, please go up and see what's the matter. Anything you say? It's Rod. Hi. Hi. <clears throat> May I come in? Why not? Well, the uh, party's moving right along, moving right along. Terrible hors d'oeuvres. He'll be here, Betty. He'll be here. Where is he? What happened in New York? Why is it all such a big secret? Well, he's back from New York. How do you know that? Well, Elliot Carson saw him late this afternoon. Betty, he'll be here. He'll be here. Oh, why don't you come downstairs? Your guests are missing you. It's that Blaine report, isn't it? You still think Stephen's seen it? I'm sure of it. I don't know how. Well, it's not impossible. Stephen's in with the big boys now. He's thrown his hat into the ring. Some of them play pretty rough. Somebody could have found out about that report, had somebody else bribed somebody else to get a copy. It's done. Rod, stay near me tonight, please. Betty, whether Stevens found out about that report or not, the fact is it's a lie. Now face him with that lie. He's got to believe you. He loves you. Yes, he loves me. 
That's exactly why he won't believe me. He's never let himself feel sure of me. Because he's never been able to feel sure of anyone. And then Martin Payton saw to that. Why didn't I tell him it at the beginning, on our honeymoon, when everything was all right? Look, stop worrying about things that haven't happened, will you? He loves you and you love him and he needs you. Everything's going to be all right. Betty. I want you to come downstairs with me. I want you to meet the lieutenant governor's wife. They say she's a very gracious lady as long as your family tree goes back to the Mayflower. Oh, I look awful. You look wonderful. Ron, I can't. Come on. Well, let me powder my nose, huh? Three seconds. Beautiful, Betty. We can't go down together, can we? No, but I'll be right behind you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Stephen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Stephen. Happy birthday to you. Toast to my grandson. Happy birthday. Oh, Stephen. Excuse me. Stephen? Stephen, Lewis has been looking forward to meeting you. Lewis, this is our young Mr. Corbin. Perhaps not at his best right now. And this is his wife, Betty. Stephen, I'm sure that the Lieutenant Governor needs no introduction. How do you do, sir? Judge Chester's been loud in your praises. Yes, yes, he's been most kind. Only truthful. Huh. How was your business trip? Rather. Rather rough, I take it. Don't you think you'd better wash up before dinner, Stephen? No, I've kept our guests long enough. Oh, very well. Uh, my friends, you've been very patient. But before dining, I must ask your further indulgence. I have a present for my grandson. Edward. Now. This can only be a pale copy of the original, Stephen. But I hope you'll accept it in the spirit in which it is given. Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. Only an enemy could have sent them. Only a coward could have done his dirty work anonymously. This trumped up piece of garbage at personal and political blackmail was intended to destroy me. Then leave him. That's right, leave him. Because you haven't got a marriage. Pack your things and get out. <laughs> 